Thanks very much. Um, just going to run through some videos of a uh, variety of techniques for trying to get cups out safely and effectively. Uh, these are my disclosures. So uh, the first and maybe most important step is good exposure. So it doesn't matter the technical task. If you can't see what you're doing, it's a lot harder. If you have good exposure, things suddenly get easier. So it's worth it to take the time at the beginning to see well. And as I sometimes would tell the fellows, we always have good exposure by the end of the case. So why don't we get it at the beginning of the case and enjoy it the whole time? Um, so exposure, then polyliner removal, screws out, and then divide the bone attachment to the back side of the cup. We'll go through kind of each of these. So um, you have to uh, get the poly out to get the screws out, and uh, in most systems, um, screws are present. And so uh, some uh, of these cups have specific tools. This one has a little rod that's threaded that goes down and jacks the poly out after grasping the rim. But there are a variety of other removal tools depending on the locking mechanism. You can see that little rod on the side view. Um, it's also possible to use a drill and screw technique either into the dome of the cup somewhere or along the rim. This worked better actually in the old days when the poly was all thicker. With big heads, sometimes the poly's too thin, so you don't get enough engagement of the threads to jack the cup off of the liner. But this can be an effective technique. And in the thin shell cups, you can do the same thing at the rim and have it work well. Another very effective technique, and one I must say I use most of the time, is just reaming the liner out. By the time they find the removal tool, you figure out how to make it work, get the thing to actually, you know, um, function properly, uh, and get the exposure, you can have the thing out by just reaming it like this. So it works for a variety of uh, companies' cups, of course. So at that point, um, you can remove the screws, you know how to do that. Uh, it is important to actually have the right screw, uh, sort of screwdriver, right, that matches the screw head. So um, uh, that means knowing what's in there and having the proper tool from that company or having one of the kind of utilitarian uh, sets that have multiple screw uh, drivers in them uh, to help with removal. Uh, if you strip them, you sometimes have to burr away the head and take the cup out and then remove the broken screw part. So that means a carbide cutting tool. So think of those things before the case rather than the middle of them. But once you have the, the liner and screws out, how do you get the cup out without doing damage? I wanna give some credit to Randy Lewis. Um, I think this is maybe the most valuable tool for revision surgery that I ran into in my career. And Randy doesn't get enough credit for designing this, coming up with the idea and then uh, patenting the idea and developing it. The a couple of companies that make these curved blade systems, but the concept is um, ingenious with the uh, ball to center uh, the instrument uh, within the cup. You need a trial liner or the original liner back in there, and then a short and long blade. This is what they look like, the starter blade and then the full radius blade. And um, it pivots on the head. now. Of course, it's uh, every orthopedic surgeon's God-given right to change techniques the first time they do it because they know better, right? So um, we have partners that use it without the heads in a variety of different ways. But I can just tell you that if you do this, it works more effectively. If you don't, you either take too much bone or you bang the blades into the cup so they're bent for the next person because they're supposed to be single use, but we all use them more than once. Um, so, you know, follow the technique, at least the, at least the first few times. Um, so starter blade, then the long curved blade, and you can divide the connection to the bone. Uh, with this radial sort of rotate, rotatory movement is helpful. After you first go around the clock, you know, one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, go around the rim. You've got to have good exposure to do this, and then you can connect the dots in a rot rotatory fashion. This just shows the big blade going in. This is what the set looks like. And this is what a cup looks like. You lose a little bit of bone sometimes, but not very much. And um, you don't have the catastrophic bone loss that I can tell you was all too common in the old days with hand instruments and you know curved hand uh, uh, osteotomes and so on. This just shows, uh, let's see if we can click on that to make it run. Um, there it goes, okay. Uh, this just shows um, this instrument in action. 
So uh, the liner's been removed. We put a trial liner back in that's blue. You can see the little short blade, and I'm pounding on that with a mallet to drive it down that interface. And even though it guides you, that round head, you've got to be a little careful. You don't rock out of there and start wandering around with that blade. So uh, it does take a little bit of axial load to keep it centered. And then uh, working along the interface, usually beginning at 12 o'clock and then working uh, both uh, forward in time and backwards in time, if you will, from 12 to 11 to 10 to 9, okay? And then um, getting around inferiorly is important. You can pull out part of the pubis on the cup. I've done that before because I didn't divide the connection to the cup in that location. So be meticulous. As McDonald says, there are times in the operation to go fast and times to go slow and, and make sure you're doing a careful job. And this is one of those careful job parts. But I think if you pay a little bit of attention, first with the short blade and then following that up with the long blade, this allows you to get around medially so you don't have to tear off the whole medial wall and create a, a central defect. I've done that before too. Um, it's just not that great when you take the cup out and there's a whole big hunk of bone still attached to it. So try to work around it, uh, take your time, make sure you divide the connection. And a lot of times when you get it, you see how the cup moved right there? The cup will shift when you divide the connection and then you know it's safe to pull it on out of there. You can see we lost very minimal bone on that one. So component removal steps, exposure, really important, poly removal, getting the screws out, and then dividing the bone attachment to the back side of the cup. Uh, those are the keys to try to get the job done safely and minimize the damage you do to somebody that already has some bone loss from whatever the problem is you're operating on. Thanks very much.